Welcome to Beautiful Savior here in SeaTac, Washington. As we gather for a time of studying God's word and what it means for your life, what it means for you, especially now as we enter into the long green year of the church here, the time where we look and see what does it mean to be the church? What does it mean to take the works, the actions, the words and deeds of our Lord and Savior and now live them, to live what he has done? This is the time where we start living and applying what God has done for you. We hear in God's words that Jesus took his disciples and asked them this question, who do you say that I am? Today, as we gather for our time in Bible study, looking to this coming Sunday, instead of looking at the text that we have for this week ahead, we're going to be taking some time and looking in the first chapter of Ephesians and looking and seeing who are you? Who do you say that you are? Who do other people say that you are? Especially now that we rejoice in what God has done for you. How does this shape us and change us? Let us begin, though, with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we look to answer that question, who are we? We give you thanks that you have made us your children sons and daughters of you, that we can call upon you as our heavenly father because you created us, you sent your son to redeem us and through your Holy Spirit, we now have life. We ask your blessing on this time in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. As we get started this day, before we go into our text, which as I said, would be Ephesians chapter one, verses one to 14. I want you to think on a few things. Things to answer that question, things to reflect upon who you are, who you are and what shapes you at this time. As we continue on with this time of facing the coronavirus, with protests that we see all around us, with events and news that are constantly changing and unfolding, when people are going through times of stress and uncertainty, with all of these different things coming at you at different ways, what is shaping you at this time? What is shaping you before this time? And to help you out as you think through this question, I have a few things for you to reflect upon. One are things that are out of your control. What impacted who you are that you couldn't shape or change? Who were your parents? Who were the ones that gave birth to you? Did you know them? Did you not? Did you agree with their choices? Did you disagree? What is your background? Where did you grow up? Where are you from? What is your ethnic origin that you claim and you say this is part of who I am? Then we could look at some of the things that you can have more of a say in. Like what jobs you've had, how much you make, where you get your news the circle of friends that you hang out with, the people that you consider to be part of your close family. And we can now start asking, what are all of these things start to say about you? What do you hear? What do you see? And what do they say when you start looking at these things? Because we can now ask, as we continue on with this time of uncertainty, what do people say about you? When someone looks at, fill in the name, who do they say you are? What is the most important thing that you want to be seen as? When we look in our time of reading today, we're going to be looking at that idea of who God wants that to be. And this will shape us as we head towards this coming Sunday, as we prepare for our texts that we have in the description of the video, where we look at our identity that we have. So take some time and ponder that. Who are you? And what does it say to those all around you? We continue with our reading from Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of, Jesus, of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to God 
and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavishes on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for your praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. As we look to our identity of who we are in Christ, who we are in God, we hear Ephesians telling us to look at the source of who you are. We can quite easily fall into this idea and notion of who we are. We say, well, we're Christians. We're one marked by Christ without actually taking the time to stop, to ponder and reflect upon what that means. We can take so much stock in just the words that we say that we don't actually think about what it means to say that. Ephesians chapter 1 tells you that God is your source, the source of all that you are, the source of every blessing. We hear this almighty word when we look at the very first verse, when Paul is stating who he's writing to and what his purpose is, that he's writing to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is part of your identity. Your identity is founded and centered upon the almighty, amazing works and blessings that you are the ones in Christ. If it wasn't for the fact that you were in Christ, you would have nothing. If it wasn't in Christ, it's nothing that Paul deems worthy of considering. And if it's not in Christ, it is dead. It is worthless, and it is to be cast aside. This is part of when we say, who are we? We hear in verse 4 that we are the ones that he chose before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight that in love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. This is who you are. You have the source that is above all other sources, the only source of life, the only source of identity, the only source of who you are that truly does matter. That you were formed, you are shaped, and you are made to be based upon the riches of God's grace alone, based on his almighty works alone, that it's that source of making what he has done and making you who you are that we can then find out our identity. We can make a lot of things about how many people you know, and it's not so much, we say it's not so much what you have done, but it's who you know. We have even theories that talk about the idea of who you know being so important because of how much you can really absorb in. You can reflect upon that circle of friends that I talked about at the very beginning of this. 
And one theory says that your brain is only capable of holding so many names and faces that when it comes down to it, you can recognize 1,500 people. You can be familiar with 150 people, but that you are only truly really capable of knowing 20 people well. We can then start looking and seeing how many people in your life as you've been in your homes. Have you taken the time to get to know better? What relationships have you continued to foster? What relationships have you been missing? And we see in Ephesians that it's all based on the fact that God, in his good pleasure, knew you. Your identity is the identity that God knows. Your identity is the identity that God has claimed, that God has redeemed. And we hear later on in chapter two of Ephesians, this wonderful word in two verse seven, so that in the coming age, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. When we look at our identity, we hear again that phrase, that phrase that your identity isn't you, it's in Christ. It is the identity of what Christ has done. It's what Jesus has done in his words, his actions, his ministry, how he lived his life, the words he taught and how we are to live. And that this is now how we are supposed to be shaped. How when people see us, they are supposed to see Christ. They are supposed to see the love that has been poured out upon you, the riches that have no end, the riches of God's mercy the unsearchable riches, as we hear in chapter three of Ephesians, of what God has done, of who God is, because he is the one that knows you and has claimed you in an identity of Christ. We now have this almighty task, this task as we look to our identity, and it's the task that as we see the long-spanning year of, uh, long-spanning time of when green is behind me, of how do you live out a time of now living what Christ has done? How do you live out a time of doing and showing and spending those unsearchable, insurmountable, uncountable riches that God has poured out to you? Because your identity is based upon Christ's identity. Your identity is based upon what he has done. A task for you this week as we prepare for this Sunday to dig deeper into this text in Ephesians chapter one is to take some time to reread Ephesians chapter one and note throughout this chapter how many different ways through faith, through the works of the Holy Spirit, what Christ has done is yours. To help you and to comment on this quickly, you will continually notice that a number of the things that we continue to hear in Ephesians is that what Christ achieved, what he gained, what he earned, especially in his baptism, is now yours through faith. That you have received all the riches that Christ had. And this is your identity. This is what the Father has poured out upon you. When he poured out his love on his one and only son, the anointed one, those gifts were given to you as well. And so, the other task for you this week, as we look to our identity, is to take some time, take some stock of your other identities, the other yous that you see that you portray to those around you. What things do you do? What tasks do you have in your life that either show God or take away from that message of what God's riches have? What things do you have in your life? What impacts and things are you being fed with? that either follow along with what God has to say or go against God and his word. Because as we look to the idea of identity, besides the things that are done that shape you and form you, that you don't control, you also have things that you choose to do, just like taking time to be in his word, to be in worship, to be in prayer, to hear God's word and to be with other Christians to shape and mold that identity that you have in Christ, and then to live and implement those things. And so 
take some time as we remember God and his word to think through your identity of who you are in Christ as we look to what it means as a church, as God's people, as those that he has poured out his insurmountable, unsearchable riches upon to see how we can continue living out what it means to be Christians. Let us turn to him in a word of prayer. Almighty God, bless the word that we have heard this day. Bless the word that we continue to hear. Keep us in your good graces. Help us to see your precious word as something dear to our identity. Help us see who we are in you as something we need to hear. Help us to search those things that take away from this identity, that would try and take us into other identities, and instead find ourselves rooted in you so that we could bear much fruit in accordance with your good graces. This we pray, Lord, in the name of Christ, the one who's given us his identity, that you look upon him when you see us. To this all God's people said, amen. God's peace to you and God's grace as you go forward this day. Thank you again for joining us for our time studying his word.